Good morning YouTube. How are ya? Iski here and I'm doing another YouTube video on a dryer. Well I think I am. I'm not sure if there's a video in this yet. We'll soon find out. So what we have here is an Electrolux fully automatic clothes dryer. Just to let you know these are exactly the same as a Simpson and a Westinghouse clothes dryer. Identical. The only thing that is different is the interface where the computer is. Um, so what's wrong with this? Well this machine was given to me the other day. You can see on the side there it's got a bit of a dent. That's not what the problem is. They just decided not to tie this down when they put it in the trailer to bring it to me. But um, yeah, so I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but I thought I'd pull the camera out and film anyway. So I've got it plugged in. Um, normally the first thing I would do is open this up and spin the bolt. I mean, I can spin it. It's turning, but it's pretty, it's pretty difficult to turn, you know, it's, it's um, a little bit stiff. I have a feeling that might be what it is, I'm not sure. Um, that it could be just a capacitor that needs to be replaced, which if it is, that's okay. Um, I'll replace the capacitor in this and release this video anyway, because I've already done a few videos where I've done capacitor replacements. But um, they're pretty long. Let's see what we see if we can do a shorter one. But um, yeah, anyway, if I actually hit the play button, it's just humming. So that is a classic capacitor needs to be replaced. But because this is so stiff for me to turn, it could actually be that something is jamming it. Um, we'll soon find out. It is actually it's moving quite freely though. What I'm thinking, what I am thinking is it could be this. This is this might be the problem. Let's turn around and have a look here. Now this is what is inside a, a clothes dryer. This is basically that and a bowl is all that's in a clothes dryer. Now basically the, the belt goes around the bowl and it goes around this thing called an idler. I suspect that the idler in that machine might be the same problem with this idler. Look at this as I turn this around. Can you see that? Let me pull it off. Can you see how that is um, broken? Sometimes the belt gets stuck into that part that's broken off and it jams and it makes things very difficult to turn. <laughs> Listen, I'm just, you know, guessing that might be the reason. This might be fine and all it is is a capacitor need to replacing but um, we'll soon find out but I just thought I'd show you that just before we start so let's actually tackle this as if we are going to replace a main capacitor in this dryer and if it is that idler um, we will replace that anyway I replace the capacitors in here regardless anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set you up on this ladder that I found at the dump I'll just put you there. Oh, it looks like my camera wants to fall over. Typical. Let me just set this up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I think I've got it. So the first thing we do is close the dryer. Um, just power it off at the dryer if you want. And we unplug the dryer. All right. I have a lot of videos of me getting into these Electroluxes if you want to check one of those out. But the main thing you have to do is you have to lie this dryer on its front. So I normally just put a cushion down like that and push this on top. Then we just want to take all of these perimeter screws around the edge off as well as all of these screws here that are over holding this cover on. We also want to take this um, Phillips head out holding that power cord stress relief out on I should say. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to just do a time lapse of me doing this. i take this cover off first. Oh look at that awesome.
Now all of these little hex bit hex screws, they are quarter inch. So I just use a quarter inch hex bit. You can use a spanner, but it'll take you forever. These things only cost a few bucks. So now we can just lift this cover off, put that somewhere, get yourself a shifter. This is the bearing nut, so the, the bearing is underneath here, so let's just take that off. There's a large washer and a lock washer and just the nut, so put those with your screws. And then what we have to do is just lift this up and then lift it up down here. It's a bit more stiff down the bottom here. There we go. I don't know if I can do this holding you, but I'll show you. If you have a look here, can you see that plug just there? Oops. That's going to your heater. So we just have to undo that. The top part of that plug, there's a little, uh, yeah, there's a little tab that you push and then that plug will pull out, but I have to put you down to do that. So there you go, you can see it has been removed. So then all we do is just slide this out, lift this up, and just we'll stick it here. Okay, so we've got that there. Now, gee, I'm good. How good am I? I'm just looking at that idler, and check that out. Can you see? That is busted. That is exactly, exactly what's going on with that one I just showed you over there. So, yes, well, let's just get the camera back to it. So, basically, this idler needs to be replaced. I'll show you how to do that. In fact, can you have a look against there? See all this? That's basically rubber. That is rubber. And that, well, we'll have to check this, um, what happens when these idlers perish like that and the, the belt gets stuck in there? It wrecks the belt. So we're gonna have to check our belt before we do anything. Well, before we put it all back together, we might have to replace the belt. But okay, so to replace that idler, all we need to do, can you see that spring? This is a spring here. That's just pulling tension onto the belt. It's actually pulling the motor into the, the idler. So let's just, um, so it's pulling the, um, the idler into the belt, I should say. So there's just a hook. Let me just get a better angle. All right, so that's a bit better. So if we just get a hand there, can you see what I'm doing? Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just lift that spring, there you go. Once that spring's been released, you can just push this back with your finger. And then we can just lift this belt off. All right, so let me just set you back here. I'll show you how I test my belts. Pretty simple. I just put it in my hand and run it through. And surprisingly, this feels excellent. This feels perfect. So that's good, luckily. Now, let's have a look here. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, this gimbal has got really buggy. Now you can see the idler. All you need to do is just pick it up. Oh, sometimes it's really, it's, it's actually glued on there with all the melted plastic, I think. So you might have to, there we go. I'm gonna, oh. all right, so that looks nice, but let's have a look. Check that out. So that needs to be replaced. Pop that down. We'll just pop that down there with the other crap. Now, I noticed just when I was pulling that off, we dropped a bit of plastic. Came off that, there we go. All right, well, to be honest, that I, that um, capacitor is probably really good. But um, with these fully automatic machines, myself personally, I do sell these, so 
Just for these more expensive machines, I will definitely replace that capacitor. So I'm going to do that now. By the way, <laughs> this is your, that's the capacitor here. That's it there. So I'm going to pull that out and put a new one in. So what I will do is come to my little box of capacitors. There we go. There's a box of 10, I think, in here. And uh, yeah, so what you want, if you want to buy a new capacitor, you basically need to get a, there. Can you see that? I don't know if that's focused. 8 UF stands for 8 microfarad. That's what you want. A motor start capacitor for an Electrolux dryer, a Simpson dryer, or a Westinghouse dryer. So, it's pretty easy. Basically, it is the same. That one down there is the same as this one. It's just held on with the, a nut. In fact, in fact, you know what? I can actually do this. I've just thought of something. I am going to pull this bowl out because this, then you, I can set you guys down there. All I need to do is just, listen, because of this stupid dent, that's been a problem. So I'm just going to set you back here and uh, do it, use two hands. In fact, I'm going to see if I can bend this back. Okay, so you just, I'm just going to lift that up. So you guys don't have to do that if you don't want. That's basically got that dent out. Awesome. Now, see what I can do. Let's see if I can set you down on this door. Can you see any better? There we go. You see how you can move your motor now? You can get better access to this capacitor. So what we want to do... Now, me personally, I like to do this in one hit. I like to do this in one hit. Um, first of all, I am going to remove this nut and the washer from this brand new capacitor. I won't be using those. We'll be using the one that's already with this old one. So I'll just put those somewhere. Now, if you weren't to do it like I am about to show you, it can be a little bit tricky because you have to kind of put a washer down there and line it up with the hole and blah, 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 as well as the washer. So what I like to do is just have my new capacitor ready. I just put it there like that. Pull these plugs off the terminals. One, two. Now, what I like to do is I just get my hand, put it under there and hold that nut. And then I just turn this capacitor. But I still keep the nut, I still hold on to the nut. I'll pull that out while I'm holding the nut in place and the washer, I just put this one straight on and screw that down. There you go, it's easy as that. And then you can get your, let's see if I can, where's my um, shifter? You can get your shifter, stick it in there and just tighten her up. Just slightly, you don't need to go nuts on it. There we go. Now, you can see there's two sets of terminals, two sets of two basically. You just wanna put one on each terminal. One, two, and that's your capacitor replaced. Perfect. Now, while I'm actually in here like this, I'm just gonna go and get my blower and blow this out. Back in a second. go. Did you see that hunts? There was a huntsman spider in there. <laughs> it wasn't a big one though. 
Awesome. Okay, so hang on a second. Let's go find us an idler. Idler. Now, let me see what I've got here. Let's take some of these out. I mean, that's good. I could use that, but I'd rather find something a little bit better. You can see how it's got some dimples in there. It should still be fine. But um, I do have a few, so I'll just keep looking. So these one, this looks okay. It has a couple of flat spots on it. These are all idlers from other machines, mind you. And I only use genuine uh, idlers. You can buy them on eBay. That's where you will probably have to get one from eBay. They're about 25 bucks, I think. But I hate them. I just think they're the cheapest pieces of crap. I bought one once before and I swore I'd never buy one again. But here we go. This one looks pretty good. I'm liking, liking the look of this. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. But yeah, so, I mean, get one from eBay if you need to do this. Get one from eBay. That's pretty much the only place you can get them, I think. You can get them online at those, you know, warehouse sites, but it'll probably cost you a bit more. Um, but yeah, if you can get a genuine one, a lot of people selling secondhand parts, I'd probably prefer to get a genuine used one of these rather than a brand new reproduction one. I just think they these are so much better. The other ones are really light and just crappy looking and they just feel cheap. But anyway, now just remember when you're putting this on, see this little kind of nylon washer type piece there? That actually goes downwards. So let's put this on. All right, so let's just put that on there. Now it's a little bit, it kind of feels a tiny bit stiff, but that's because there's a little bit of residue from that melted plastic and stuff from the old one. But um, yeah, it's still, it'll loosen up. You can put a bit of grease on there if you really want, but there's really no need. Now, there was a spring. Where was, oh, there we go. The spring's still here. Cool. Now, I'm just going to grab this bowl, but first of all, I'm just going to go around and give this a once-over and just make sure this dent is out. As good as I can get it, at least. Wish people would take more care of their stuff. <laughs> I know they were going to throw it out, but they they asked me if I wanted it. I said yep. So they brought it over and they didn't tie it down. Awesome. Okay, but before we I do anything, I'm going to put this back together now. But before I do that, I just want to check this bearing. It feels really nice, nice and smooth. See how these things tend to come out? I'm just going to place that back. Now there's a spring here. This is all held together by a spring. You just kind of pull it apart like this and just push that back in there like that. And that's all. I should have blown this down. That's okay. But what I am going to do, can you see this is, I don't know if you can see this. Let me just check out. Can you see this part here? This is, how do I get it off? There we go. So you just undo it like that. This is the um, the bit of ducting, the exhaust ducting. But um, I just noticed it's really filthy. I mean, I'm just going to go and clean that out now. Give me a second. I used to actually clean these out just by using my hand and rags and stuff. But um, I've kind of got a bit better. Um, my mum left oh hang on a second I dropped it my mum left this thing here I've never used it it's called a cobweb broom so it's just the perfect size it's really good for the uh, Fisher and Pickle dryers I just stick that in there like that and just give it a bit of a sweep good as new 
Good as gold, mate, good as gold. Awesome, so now I'm just gonna put this back on. Is that the way it was? Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna set this to the side for a moment. Put the bowl back in. <clears throat> now, just before I put the bowl in, this is gonna be funny. What I'm gonna do is just check around the rim here and look for flat spots because Sometimes, have you ever heard that sound when they, these things turn around, they kind of go, put it um, put it um, put it um, put it um. That's because there's a flat spot. And if I feel correct, there is a tiny little flat spot there. You probably couldn't see it on the camera, but I can feel it by running my fingers around. So I'm just gonna give that a slight push. That's all it takes. And that feels really good. So, just gonna lift this up, set it back into the, the lip of the door, around the door, I should say. There we go. Just make sure it turns nicely. Beautiful. Now. Okay, how am I gonna show you this? Um, I might need to turn this around. Now, if I put you there, if I put that there, we, can you guys see what I'm doing? Probably not. All right, I'll see. Hopefully, um, let me just set you here and see if you can see. Not really. Let me just set something up. All right, so this is getting a little bit diff tricky. So what I'm gonna do is just wing this. So it's about to start raining, so I've gotta be quick. So I'm just gonna throw this belt around the dryer, make sure that this, these grooved, this grooved side, see there's a grooved side and then there's a non-grooved side. So this grooved side has to go against the dryer, the, the bowl, I should say. Now, if you have a look on if you have a look on the, um, I don't know if you can see this, if you have a look on the, the drum itself, you can actually see there's actually a line where the previous belt was, and that's because there, there's dust on that drum. So you just, basically you get a really good idea of the position that the belt was on previously. So we just wanna drop this belt down so that it's kind of almost marrying up with that line, basically, yeah. Now. What are you guys seeing? Okay, so remember, this motor, we want that to be pushed back as far as back as we can, basically there. Now, let me just put this here and see if I can set you guys on here. Is that gonna work? Let me just put that there. There we go. That's better, I think that's better. That's going to have to do. Okay, so we've got our belt, basically. We've got our belt, and it's pretty much where that dust mark is, where the previous belt was. Now, we want to put this over our, this, you know, it's called an armature of the motor. You can actually see the grooves on this, on this part here. Actually, that kind of lines up with the grooves on the belt, so you just want to pop that over there. Probably put it down towards the bottom of that thread or the grooves just so that it's like that can you guys see what I've done and so that the belt is in front of that idler so now what we're going to do if you have a look down here hopefully you can see this there's a little hook that was where this this spring that remember I removed this spring that's that hook is where the spring hooks around so all I'm going to do now is pull the tension on so we're just going to pull this spring it's going to move this idler forward and take, make it nice and tight and then we're going to hook this down to here. There we go, down, down, down and there it is. So that's it, it's basically put back on. So now what I'm going to do, you can't just put your dry back together, you have to check it first. So what I like to do, let me put you back up here. 
just get my hands and just turn it and make sure that the belt stays on and the idler stays on. You will notice that the belt will actually kind of raise up and down, but the idler will also raise up and down. That's why it's not kind of bolted with a nut on there. It's designed to kind of move up and down. So if we just turn it around a few times, looks excellent. Looks great, feels great in my hand. Now, remember these are designed to stop and go the reverse direction. So let's go the reverse direction. And sometimes you will notice that this will actually move up and down like that. The belt's just moved up slightly, but it's all good. In fact, I just felt a little bit of a bump. So what I might do, and I think it's because the belt is actually moved up slightly too high. It's actually right up where the, the top lip of this idler is. So what I'm gonna do is actually drop this down so that these grooves are lower down, you know, basically where the bottom end of this thread or the, the grooves are on this armature. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. So basically this belt has risen up a little bit high now. So what I wanna do is actually make it so that it's lower down. So basically this belt, you can see where these um, the grooves, we just wanna make this belt. I don't know if I can do this while I'm holding you. I'm just gonna pull it this way, but at the same time push it down so that they're dropping down on those grooves. There we go. Now let's try that. Hopefully you can understand that. It's all trial and error really. All right, so this way, which I think is anti-clockwise, if you're looking at it front on. Now let's go the other way. Feels better. It feels better. To be honest with you, it would have been fine. It would have been fine before, but remember how I said this is a little bit stiff. It's not going up and down because there was a little bit of kind of rubber film attached to this post because of the disintegrated previous idler. But now that I'm doing this, I'm actually cleaning it. I'm just kind of cleaning that. So this idler is going to rate rise now. So that's that looking good. Go the other way. And that feels great. So, time to put it all back together. I'm just gonna turn this around. All right, so basically to put this back together, it's pretty easy. Now remember, remember we had the, um, the heater, we have to connect this plug that we unplugged which is this one here we have to put this back into the heater done then we get our um this is basically called a strain relief this is the power cord so we want to actually slide this back in there like that and I like to um basically get Remember the um, exhaust pipe? So this exhaust piping has to marry up with that exhaust piping down there. I like to marry up that first, push it in, basically like that. Now, just line it up. Now then all I do is I just push this bowl forward so that the, um, like the little, the axle goes through this bearing. So we just line that bearing up and push that down, just like that. All right, so I'm just going to do, normally I just put in one screw in each corner, which is what I'm gonna do now, because I don't put it all back together. I just like to, I just like to run it just for a few minutes just to make sure that that belt's not gonna come off. 
because there's nothing worse than having to undo all these screws. And this is being slightly annoying because remember, there was a dent. <laughs> I've fixed the dent up on the, I've fixed the dent up on the um, body of the dryer, but the um, this side piece is slightly dented still. So what I might do, is see if I can kind of pull that out a little bit. And that's all it needs, I think. Okay, so four screws for myself, that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to put this bearing nut back on. Put that there, put that there, push that down. And um, I'll just find my shifter. Kind of tighten that up. You don't have to tighten this like incredibly tight just like this just firmly like that that's all you need and that's all I'm going to do for the time being I'm just going to set this up hit the play button and see what happens let's just um, turn it on for the power hit play there we go all done all fixed so what I'm going to do is just let this run until it stops and goes in the other direction and make sure that the belt's, you know, behaving. And then I'm just going to put all of those screws back on as well as the, um, the screws for this cover. Remember that cover down there? You've got to put that back on and that'll be fixed. All done. So, yeah, interesting, eh? So that's your, that's your problem. That happens a lot, you know. The idlers are the probably the idlers and capacitors are the worst things in a dryer. These go all the time and capacitors go all the time. Just remember if you ever have to replace a broken belt, it's probably broken because this is broken. So you will probably have to buy two of these things. So there you go guys. I hope you got something out of that. I'll quickly do a time lapse of me putting this uh, back cover back on this dryer when this is done. Um, because I don't like kind of undoing stuff and um, you know just <laughs> relying on people to remember what I did in the beginning. So I'll just quickly do a time lapse. You'll see me put it back together and this will be done. So I hope you got something out of that. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. down at the bottom. Okay guys, so I don't know if you heard that, but um, this dryer is making a really high pitch squeaking sound now. And uh, yeah, it, I don't know if it's the, it could, the reason behind that could be the bearing or it could be the idler that we just replaced. I have a feeling that it's the idler. Uh, it's a used idler, but um, this is why I like to kind of do these checks. But um, I have a feeling it's more to do with that kind of residual film that was on that post that I was trying to clean that was making the idler kind of not turn as freely as it would normally. So what I'm going to do is just go through, get go back into it, um, just disconnect everything. I'm gonna stick another idler on because I don't want to kind of have to do this again. But what I'm also going to do is clean that post um, with a bit of wet and dry. And I may even put a little bit of grease. Can you hear that? Yeah, it's kind of stopped. It comes and goes. Awesome, so that's what I'm going to do now. Let me just stop this. You see, this is why, <laughs> this is why I don't put all the screws on. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so. Yeah, it's very tight, look. Ah, oh, look at this. Check this out. Oh, I can't get it off. This is crazy. Now this idler is stuffed. This idler is busted now. Oh, come on. I can't get it off. So this idler wasn't even turning. And look at that, it's breaking apart. Wow, okay. I can't get it off. Come on. How am I going to get that off? All right. Look at that. That idle is stuffed. So, wow. This was a real problem, like I, that's crazy. All right, so, basically I'm gonna have to clean that off. That post that the idler slides on, it's pretty grippy. And it was grippy enough that this actually stuck down and it wouldn't turn and it's now destroyed. So, wow, never had that happen. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Hopefully this fixes it, I reckon it will. Just get yourself a bit of wet and dry. Or even 400 mil grit sandpaper, I reckon. I am just gonna put that over the top there. Make sure it's like nicely there's no water on it when you're doing this. You don't want it going in the motor, but it's okay. All right, so that feels really smooth. So, okay, so I have another idler. I'm just gonna throw this one over there because that's our busted one. We got another idler. I'm just gonna dry that. I want to see how this one moves when I put it over. There we go, look, I can spin it with my finger. I can lift it up and spin it. All right, so I should have done that in the beginning, but to be honest, I've done this probably easily 500 times to 500 different dryers. I've never really had that. So I'm kind of happy that I was um, filming this. Now, one thing that I might do, because I've just brought it out, I might just put a tiny little bit of grease on there as well. Don't need to do this, folks but it doesn't hurt either. So let's just put that there. Remember, this wash apart face down. Wow, that was nuts. Okay. So now I just want to put it back together. You saw me do that before, so I'm not going to put you through that again. Oh, beautiful. Now this is actually lifting up really nicely and smoothly now. And it's falling down when it goes the other way. Okay, so <laughs> now we should be golden. All right, I'm just gonna put this back together. While I'm here, I might, I know I'm not gonna have to go back into this again, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just gonna put that screw in the back of this drain relief. All right, let's stand you back up and take two.
All right, I'll just run that, see how we go. I'm pretty sure that'll be fine, and then I'll button her up. Damn it, wrecked a really good <laughs> idler. Oh well, at least I don't pay for them. Okay, so there you go. That's working great. So, I am just quickly going to put this back together. <laughs> okay, there you go, folks. Um, I'm not sure if I said this before. I think I did. Did my normal sign-off spiel. Hope this helped somebody out there. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy. I am now just going to clean this up and I'll probably do maybe three or four test cycles with wet washing. Remember, if you're going to test a dryer, you always have to use wet washing because they do behave differently than if they've got dry washing in because it's a lot lighter. But um, there you go. I hope you've learned something. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Oh.